I better not get too excited up here. <laughs> I want to start with something that my husband and I have learned over the years in uh, working with corporate prayer sessions. Three rules. Three rules of engagement. And the first rule is you'll like this. The first rule is everyone participates. So turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to participate. And the second rule is, I'm going to release grace to you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to release grace to you. Go, not go, say, look, man, look, go, be a little bit The journey to Amos 911. In that day, I will be in the tabernacle of David. I will repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins. And rebuild it as in the days of old. So what does that mean? It sounds wonderful. But what does it mean for us today? What did it mean back in history? So I'd like to take a journey in history. A very big overview. No, not detailed. But an overview with the message. That I believe will land us for today. The story begins in the garden. Adam and Eve were created by God. They were blessed by God. Be fruitful and multiply. But then, oops. A little mistake. They ate from the, uh, the wrong tree. The tree of knowledge is going to be an evil. And they fell. And they hid. But God was in the garden. And the scripture says they heard the sound of his footsteps. How did they know that sound if they hadn't heard it before? They hid. No, But God. You know, when we, 
lose something precious for it to us. We start looking for him, right? Well, God in his holiness had to deal with the issue. And they had to leave the garden. The garden of Eden. He walked with his precious creation. Where they walked closely with the precious creation. The grief in God's heart must have been huge. Though he sent them away out of the garden, the message is still the same. Where are you? I'm looking for you. So throughout history, I believe as God pushed Adam and Eve out of the, the garden, in his careful wisdom, he began a plan of restoration. Of the relationship that was lost. So man went on into the earth and started doing their things. And it got kind of worse and worse. And he looked down from heaven. And he saw a righteous family, Noah. And he said, Noah, build me an ark. I've got to deal with this wickedness. And you know the story. Noah built the ark, the floods came, But that was the first step. Noah, I'm going to speak with one man. Noah. Noah had three sons. And out of Shem came a whole line of patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he spoke to Abraham. And out of you, Abraham will come a nation. Through which all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Abraham waited a long time for that to happen, didn't he? But it doesn't matter. Out of Abraham came a great nation. So from Noah through the patriarchs, God chose one man to speak to. His first steps to redeem that precious relationship. Well, that great nation came under oppression. And there came a set time where God had to intervene. And he spoke to Moses. Moses, it's time for deliverance. Deliverance happened. But out of that deliverance came a set time when God shifted the worship of nation. It was a set time for him to come and dwell with men again. And 
And he gave Moses instructions on Mount Sinai. So to build a tabernacle. A place of meeting. Where he could dwell with men. Where the cloud by day and the fire by night. Through the wilderness. And that was a period of time where God dwelt with men. But he was careful. In that tabernacle was an outer court, an inner court, and the holy place. Be careful, man, how you approach a holy God. One man, one day a year, could enter into the Holy of Holies and make atonement for the nation. The scriptures say that when that man, that priest Aaron first, went in, all Israel stood and watched from a distance. God was very careful. We're dealing with us. We're very precise in doing Because within that Holy of Holies would be a representation of the meeting place that would extend through the ages. He said, Build me a tabernacle. Build me an ark. Wherein, Hebrew says, was the law of Moses. The manna of heaven that sustained people through the desert of wilderness. And the rod of Aaron that budded. The authority that causes that which is in us to bud, to break forth, to break fruit. But on top of that ark would be a mercy seat. And God promised, there I will meet with you. It was made out of pure gold. Two angels. It was hammered gold. Now, where did that gold come from? They weren't mining gold in the wilderness. Before the deliverance, God gave favor to the nation of Israel to go to the Egyptians, the very ones that oppressed them, and said, give me your gold. They gave it to him. The gold in the tabernacle of Moses came from the very people that oppressed them. It will be a very place where God said, I will meet with you. I will deliver you. I will bring you to a place of freedom. That ark, the Holy of Holies, is very carefully patterned and followed throughout scriptures. Because there would come a time when the tabernacle of Moses was in Shiloh for 360 some years. There was war with the Philistines. And that precious holy place of meeting was separated. 
And I won't go into that detail. That's a whole other thing. But during that time, God was raising up a young man. Out in the wilderness, nobody knew about it. And God was preparing him for another set time, a shift in the nation. Where the people, instead of following the priests, that had become kind of weak. They said, we want a king. So from the, so from the history of priesthood into the, uh, the government of the government of kings, David saw in Kirjath Jeoring. Kirjath Jeoring that was separated and sitting there. David saw the ark separated and nobody so, paid attention. So So very long story short, David brought that ark into the center of attention of Israel once again. Nobody has seen that kind of worship before. to do it. First Chronicles says that it was morning and evening sacrifices. So that's a little bit obscure, but one thing we do know it was about worshiping the Lord God Almighty of the universe and bringing his presence in again to dwell in the midst of the nation and amazing things happened the enemies around Israel were subdued Enemies around Israel were subdued. And so David began to make plans for a really permanent dwelling place, the temple. His Solomon completed the task. So the ark was in Jerusalem. With the Asaph priesthood. And the rest of the tabernacle of Moses was in Gibeon under the Zadok priesthood. So at the dedication of the temple, the outer court and the inner court, the Holy of Holies, came together and the glory of the Lord fell. Not just on the Levites and the singers and the dancers. But all those there witnessed 
That started the season of temple worship. In a long period of time where the temple became a center of worship. And there are ways of coming and going with that. But there were four kings who reset the worship in accordance with the tabernacle of David during those years. Solomon, Solomon, Josiah, Josiah, Hezekiah, Joash, Joash, and one priest, Zerubbabel. An amazing thing happened. Israel prospered during those years. They shifted from the wars of David into a season of prospering when the tabernacle of David was established. So God sent prophets Amos lived during those years. Why during the temple years would he prophesy a former way of worship? The answer lies in the prospering that comes when we worship and put God as the center of our nations, the center of our lives. There is a tremendous prospering that comes. And it was during the temple years where the Old Testament became to be established in the hearts of people. And God was looking upon creation. He used those kings and Zerubbabel to continue pushing forth the true worship and after about 400 years of silence Galatians 4, 4 says another set time came and a point of time where God said I'm ready to reveal myself to my creation not full restoration and he sent his precious son his only son who now forever lives to intercede for us to have that relationship with us we are once again and why 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 Jesus and the upper room expression of worship that exploded the, the church onto the face of the earth why would James prophesy to the New Testament church Amos 9-11 
something of a brand, get rid of Prophet David. It's because of what the tabernacle of David represents. It is that inner court, that holy of holies encounter. His expression of Jesus on the earth. Takes the place of the ark. But the celebration and putting Jesus first is the representation of the Holy of Holies. God is once again saying to us, Where are you? Will you come and seek me? For wherever two or more are gathered, I will be in your midst. Why stay in your closets? When I long to When I long to speak to you. See, the ark represents our life. What is it that's What is it that hurting you? What is it that that's keeping you fearful? He has the answer at the mercy seat. I will not hear you. It doesn't matter how hard and hammered the gold of your life is. It doesn't matter what you have encountered. What matters, will you come to the mercy seat? Will you come to my answers? Will you come to the man of heaven? Will you come to the rock of my authority, the word of God, which within is all life and health and being? So we're on a journey over the next three days to have that encounter with the Lord. He wants to meet with you. He is the Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God with us. I say this with all due humility. I believe you are one of those appointed times. Rend your hearts, not your garments. You are not here by accident. You are here because God wants to meet with you. He wants to reveal himself to you. There are as yet answers. All that they said to you. No. I am firmly convinced. The eyes of the Lord are on this nation. It's time for a